Hello, welcome to this lesson in Mastering 5th Grade Math. Here we're going to learn how to add fractions. And so in the course of learning how to add fractions, we're going to have to learn the rules of fraction addition. I promise you they're pretty simple, and I can break it down for you so that you understand every single topic very simply and very easily. Just follow me through the lessons. Make sure you understand uh, what's going on in terms of the problems we solve here and then grab the worksheets and practice them yourself and build your skills as we move lesson by lesson. So we've talked about fractions quite a bit in uh, previous parts of Mastering 5th Grade Math and now we would like to learn how to add them together. So for instance we have the fraction 1 8th written like this and let's say we would like to add to that the fraction 6 8ths. 6 8ths. Alright now the number one rule with adding fractions together, the number one thing that you just have to remember is that the denominator, in this case the 8, they have to be the same number between the two fractions before you can add these fractions together. In this case we have an 8 for the denominator in both places so we can add this fraction with no problems. Now in the future if you have different numbers on the bottom you have to uh, change the problem a little bit before you can add the fractions. So that's number one rule. These numbers on the bottom have to be the same. All right, now when that is the case, what you do, let me switch colors here, is you simply keep the number on the bottom. So you do not add eight plus eight, you simply keep the number eight on the bottom. You don't add them, you just keep it. And on the top, what you do is you add the numerator. So what you have on the top is one plus six. So on the top of the fraction, you have one plus six. On the bottom, you keep the eight. And I'll just switch colors one final time. So 1 plus 6, you all should know, is 7. And the bottom is 8. So the answer to this fraction addition is 7 eighths. Again, the whole thing centers around the fact that the denominators of these fractions have to be the same. Now let me spend just a minute, I'm not going to do it for every problem, but, but for the first couple here, let's just show you what's happening in terms of a picture. right? So 1 eighth. If we needed to represent that graphically as a fraction, the way one way in which you could do that is to draw like a pizza or a pie and split it into eight pieces. And so the way you do that is you do one line down vertically, one down horizontally, and then do a giant X through the center. And if you convince yourself this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces of the pie. That's why we're doing it eight pieces because of this. Now, um, this fraction is one eighth, so it's not the whole pie, it's not all eight pieces, it's only one piece out of eight. So the fraction here is represented graphically by one piece out of eight. That's why I'm shading only the one piece out of eight. Now what we're really doing is we are adding to this, I'll draw a plus sign, what this guy was equal to. Now if we wanted to draw this in terms of a graphical picture, we could draw another pie, and again, this pie, or this pizza, is again cut into eight pieces because of the denominator is an eight. And so I can say, uh, cut this guy in fourths, and then go through the center, like a big X, and I have eight pieces. And this particular one is six out of eight pieces. So here is one piece, here's one, here's two, here's three, Here's four, here's five, and here's six. All right, so what we have graphically, if you could think about pizzas, is here we have a very small part of the pizza, only one piece out of eight. Here's a separate pizza, six pieces out of eight. And so when we add these things together, graphically you see what would this look like if we really were trying to combine them. Like if we had two pizzas, we cut them up like this and we put all of the slices that we're talking about here in one box, how, what would the fraction look like? Well again it would be cut into eight pieces. So we would have something like this. And how many pieces would we have? We'll shade it, uh, we'll shade it green just to be a little bit different. Well now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's the seventh piece coming from the other one. So we would have, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, and the seventh piece comes from the one over here, so we'll just put that one over here. So if we were to try to add these fractions with real pizzas, we would cut one up like this and take one piece, we'd cut one up like this and take six pieces, we'd take all the pieces, 
put them in a separate box and arrange them and we would see that we would have seven out of eight pieces. That's why we get the answer of seven eighths. And it also shows you why the denominators have to be the same before you can add fractions because you have to have a common framework between the two fractions. In this case, it's how many pieces that pizza's cut up into. So whenever we add fractions, we need to have the same denominator. We carry it over, right? And then we simply add the numerators and that's what we're basically doing here. All right, now let's go ahead and do that again. And we're not gonna draw pictures for every one of these things, but we'll do it in the beginning. What if we wanted to add 1 6 plus 4 6? Well, without using any pictures, the way we would do it mathematically is we would look and see, first of all, are these denominators the same? And they are. So what we do is we keep the 6. He just stays in the answer. We don't add them or anything, we just keep them. And then we have 1 plus 4. So I put 1 plus 4 to remind you that what we're doing is we're adding and we get 5 6. Now this is the answer, 5 6. And again, I'm not going to do it for every one of these problems, but let's do it this one last time. If I wanted to represent this fraction, it would be 1 6. The, way, the easiest way for you to divide a pizza like this into 6 pieces is draw a horizontal line and then draw a big X like this. You have one, two, three, four, five, six equal pieces. Now in my particular case, I only have one of those six pieces, so I'll shade this guy. This is the fraction of the pizza I have in that case here. Now I'd like to add to him what I have for the second guy. So I will draw another pizza, and I'll draw another horizontal line, and I'll draw another crisscross like this. And then I will say I have four out of those six pieces. So I have one, two, three, and four. All right, so that represents four out of six pieces of that pizza. And then whenever I see what this is equal to, again, if I cut these pies up in, into six pieces and take this one piece and take this four pieces and I put them in a separate box and see what my fraction is going to be, again, it's all going to be out of six pieces because that's the common framework of both of the fractions that I started but, with. But now I have six, I have four pieces from here. This is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four, but I'm also adding to it the one piece I have from before. So this is the fifth piece. So the fraction that we get here is one, two, three, four, five out of six pieces. That's exactly why we get five sixths for that answer, five sixths, five out of six pieces. So number one rule of fractions, the denominators have to be the same. You just carry that denominator to the answer, and then you add those numerators together uh, to get what we have, 5 sixth in this case. All right, now let's go ahead and work a few more. Now we're not gonna be uh, drawing pictures for every one of these guys, but we want to get some practice. So let's say we have 2 ninths uh, plus 3 ninths. The first thing we check is we say, are the denominators uh, equal? And they already are equal. So in our answer, we just keep a nine. Then we take the numerators and we add them together, two plus three, all right? And then we say two plus three is five ninths, five ninths. And this is the final answer. Now, one thing you do, anytime you solve a fraction problem, uh, when you get the answer, one thing you do, and we studied this before, is you have to check your answer to see if it's in simplest form or in lowest terms, or if the fraction is fully simplified. It's another way of saying the same thing. And we've already covered how to simplify fractions in great detail. Basically what you do is you look at the top and the bottom and you try to figure out, is there a number that you can divide into the top and the bottom, both equally, or both a whole number of times, that will reduce that fraction for you. If you're fuzzy on how to do that, go back to the previous lessons in, in simplifying fractions and you'll have lots of practice with that. But here we look at 5 ninths and this is already simplified. We can't simplify it any further. Uh, for this problem, 5 sixths, same thing. We can't divide 5 sixths by anything to make it simpler. And the original problem we had, 7 eighths, the answer we got, we can't really simplify that any further. So, so far, all of these problems are simpler problems that we haven't really needed to simplify the answer because it's already simplified. Now what if we have something like 3 elevenths and we add to it 6 elevenths? First thing you check, is the denominator the same? In this case it is, so we just keep the 11 on the bottom. Now we can add the numerators, 3 plus 6, 3 plus 6 is 9, 
you just keep it over 11 and there you go. And you can check and see, can I divide the top or the bottom in, by a number where both will go evenly and I can't do that, so that's already simplified. All right, and now we just wanna do one more to round it out. What if I have two tenths and I'm adding to that one tenth? Check and see, are the denominators the same? And they are, so I just keep them like this and I add the numerators together, two plus one. 2 plus 1, of course, is 3, and then I keep it over 10. And I check to see if this is fully simplified. It, 3 tenths is already simplified. I can't divide top and bottom by something to make it any simpler. So that's the fundamental basics of how you add fractions together. You check and see if the denominators are the same, and if they are, you carry it over, you hold it, and then you simply add the numerators. You always check your answer to see if you can simplify it. In all of these cases, it's already been fully simplified, so we just circle the answer and we're done. So make sure you understand these questions. Go do the worksheet problems yourself, and then follow me on to the next lesson where we will continue adding fractions and more, uh, I guess, difficult problems where we'll have to simplify the answer to get the correct fractional answer.